classifying triangles by angle or side. This is lesson 4.2. A triangle is a polygon with three sides. Now we know that. We can classify triangles in two ways, by their angle measure and by their side lengths. Let's take a look at this diagram. This is triangle ABC. It's named for its vertices. We have vertex A, vertex B, and vertex C. And we can see the sides, the segments. We have segment AB, segment BC, and segment AC. So classifying triangle, triangles by angle measure, we've got an acute triangle that has three acute angles. Not one, it's got three acute angles. Those are angles less than 90 degrees. And it's named from the Latin acutus, which means pointed or sharp. Equiangular triangle, that has three congruent acute angles. You can look at the word equiangular and it kind of looks like equal angle, doesn't it? So that means every single angle is the same measure. So they're all 60 degrees, because well, the triangle has 180 degrees inside. A right triangle that has one right angle. Just one. It can't have two. It wouldn't be a right triangle. It wouldn't be a triangle at all. An obtuse triangle has one obtuse angle. That's an angle that's more than 90 degrees. So it's got one big obtuse angle, okay? And we can classify triangles by their angle measure. Here we have triangle ADC. That's this whole triangle. That's both of the ones inside. It's the whole thing. So angle ADC is a right angle. That's this angle right here. So, triangle ADC is a right triangle. It contains a right angle. Triangle ABD, that's this one on this side, we can see that this angle measures 30 and this angle measures 30, but there's nothing given for this one. So, angle ABD and DBC, the blue one and this unknown one, form a linear pair. So, they're supplementary. Supplementary means 180 degrees, doesn't it? Therefore, the measure of angle ABD plus the measure of angle DBC is equal to 180 degrees. And by substitution, the measure of angle ABD plus that blue 60 degree one equals 180 degrees. So the measure of angle B ABD must be 120 degrees. So triangle ABD is an obtuse triangle by definition because it contains that 120 degree angle. Now look at triangle BCD. That's this triangle right here. Angle ADC is a right angle. We figured that out in the first one, didn't we? So that means the measure of angle ADC is 90 degrees. It's a right angle. And the measure of angle ADC minus the measure of angle ADB is going to equal the unknown measure of angle BDC. So what we're saying is, we know that that's a right triangle up there, and we can see that the one angle is 30, so we can take the 90 degrees of a right triangle and subtract that 30 to find that unknown side, okay? That unknown angle side. So 90 minus 30 is equal to 60 degrees. So we know that that top angle is 60 degrees, and it's given that the measure of angle DBC, the blue one, was 60 degrees, and it's given that the measure of angle BCD, the red one, was 60 degrees, so if this is 60 degrees and this is 60 degrees and we just figured out that's 60 degrees, well, therefore, triangle BCD is an equiangular triangle by definition. Every angle is the same measure. Now here's triangle classification by side length. We have an equilateral triangle. That's three congruent sides. We can see the congruent marks on each of the sides. We have an isosceles triangle that has at least two congruent sides. We can see the congruent marks on its sides. Then we have a scalene triangle that has no congruent sides. That comes from Greek for uneven scalene. We have a 7 centimeter side, a 10 centimeter side, and a 12 centimeter side. They're all different, so that's scalene. Now look at this diagram for triangle ABC. So that's this triangle right here on the left. We have AB is congruent to AC. We can see the congruent marks. This blue one is congruent to that green one. And that means AC is 15 centimeters. Because if this one's 15 centimeters and it's congruent to this one, this one's 15 centimeters. But look, the base is 15 centimeters. So triangle ABC is equilateral. 
And look at triangle ABD. That's the whole thing, so ignore the green line in the middle. By the segment addition postulate, we've got BD is equal to BC plus CD. So this entire bottom, BD, is equal to the BC plus CD. 15 plus 5 is 20. That means we've got a 15 centimeter side, an 18 centimeter side, and a 20 meter so centimeter side. And because no exterior sides are congruent, triangle ABD is scaling. So remember the segment addition postulate? We did that back in video 1.2 a long time ago. But if you have a line segment and B is between A and C, that means AB plus BC is equal to AC. Okay? We can add those two segments to get the entire segment. Okay? Using triangle classification, we can find the side lengths of the triangle. So take a look at the drawing first. Do you see the congruent marks? Yeah, there's one here and there's one here. And I see three different algebraic expressions for the side lengths with a variable x. So we need to find the value of x, and it's given that segment JK is congruent to KL. That means that they're equal. That's the definition of congruent segments. If they're congruent, they're equal, right? So what we can do is take those two congruent side lengths and set the algebraic expressions equal to each other to solve for x. That means we can get rid of the x on this side by subtracting x from both sides and get a 3x minus 1.3 equals 3.2. We can get rid of this minus 1.3 by adding 1.3 to both sides. And that creates a zero pair. We're left with 3x equals 4.5. Divide both sides by the coefficient 3, so we get x is equal to 1.5. So now that we know x is equal to 1.5, we can substitute it into each expression to find the side lengths. So jk is equal to 4x minus 1.3. That's 4 times 1.5 minus 1.3, or 6 minus 1.3, which gives us a 4.7. And it's supposed to be congruent to this one. We have x plus 3.2, which is a 1.5 plus 3.2, which is a 4.7. So yes, those two sides are congruent. Then we have JL. That's 5x minus 0 0.2. That's 5 times 1.5, or a 7.5 minus 0 0.2, which tells us that side length is 7.3. So we got lucky because it showed us that those two side lengths were congruent, so we could set them to equal each other to solve for x, and then substitute x into each equation to find each side length. Okay? Now, some classifications can occur together. This is an isosceles triangle with two congruent sides. It's got a 7-centimeter side and another 7-centimeter side. So that's isosceles. It's also a right triangle with one right angle. So it's both. Here's our last problem. Music triangles are made by bending pieces of steel into the shape of an equilateral triangle. If each side length is 4 inches, how many can be made from 100 inches of steel rod? See, the amount of steel needed to make one triangle is equal to the perimeter P of the equilateral triangle. It's got three sides. They're 4 inches for each side, so perimeter is 3 times 4. That's 12 inches for each triangle. If we have 100 inches of steel rod to work with, we can divide that by the 12 inches and find that it comes out as 8.33, or 8 and 1 third. But we need to make complete triangles. So there's enough to make 8 complete musical triangles. Okay? So when you're working with variables like this, Remember, a variable can represent a positive or a negative value. And be careful. We can't look at a figure and assume segments are congruent. They must be marked as congruent. Our next lesson is the triangle sum theorem and auxiliary lines, 4.3a. I hope you were able to follow along, and a lot of this you might have known from middle school. So. It's just a good refresher, and I hope you have a great day. And hit that like button for me. I could really use it, and I'll see you next time. Bye.